we bless your name in jesus name we worship clap your hands everybody and be seated hallelujah amen we bless god for the gift of life sometimes we are so casual when we think about life we are so very casual and we act like we deserve it we don't deserve it. we don't deserve it it's a privilege it's a privilege and when you nothing makes you enjoy that thing called gift like gratitude gratitude should be an attitude don't wait till things are good before you thank god always thank god for the gift of life life is a gift to be enjoyed not a problem to be solved life is a gift to be enjoyed not a problem to be solved every day of your life thank god for the gift of life amen amen first samuel 20 verse 3 david said to jonathan there is a step between me and death that's the fragility of life life is very fragile very fragile so we must continually thank god every day for the gift of life amen i've seen people with all their education the academic strength wealth money connection die cheaply so thank god every day Every time I see people, I tell them, I thank God for your life. Thank God I'm still seeing you. Thank God you are still alive. Thank God you are still breathing. Amen. Tell somebody, life is a gift to be enjoyed. Not a problem to be solved. Say that again. Life is a gift to be enjoyed. Not a problem to be solved. So every day you thank the Lord and you be grateful to the Lord and say, Lord, I thank you for giving me life. Thank you for giving me life. Thank you, Lord, that I'm alive and well. Amen. Someone just, um, um, a month ago, I was told about somebody who just got some houses in the eastern part of Europe. He was so excited. Came home to a part of Africa to tell his family about it. And he never returned. He wasn't sick. He wasn't sick. He never returned. These things happen. Not because you're, you're prayerful. It's God that just said, you still have a long way to go. There's still so much he has for you to do that you've not even scratched the surface yet. So just be grateful. It doesn't matter how things are. Just say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. Thank you that my life. Thank you. I, I can see the sunlight. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Amen. All right. Good to see everyone today. And I know that God has something in stock for us. If you have your Bible, could you break it open to 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 1 to verse 6. 2 Kings chapter 8. 2 Kings, the book of Kings is for royal people. Amen. So you are royalty. Then spake Elisha unto the woman whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise and go thou and thy household and sojourn wheresoever thou canst sojourn for the lord had called for a famine and it shall also come upon the land seven years and the woman arose and did after the saying of the man of god and she went with her husband and sojourned in the land of the philistines and she went forth to cry unto the king for a house and for a land. The king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, I pray thee, all the great things that Elisha had done. And it came to pass, as he was telling the king how he had restored a dead body to life, that behold, the woman whose son he had restored to life, cried to the king for a house and for a land and Gehazi said my lord O king this is the woman divine arrangement and this is a son Elisha restored to life the, the last verse I'm going to read and when the king asked the woman she told him so the king appointed hmm, unto her a certain officer saying restore all that was hers and all the fruits of the feed 
since the day she left the land even until now i want to share briefly on divine help and i want you to lift your right hand before i go further say in the name of jesus by reason of the anointing today i will be greatly helped say that again i'll be greatly helped i will be greatly helped i will be greatly helped in psalm 46 verse 1 it says god is our refuge and our strength a very present help in time of trouble in hebrews 4 verse 16 he said let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need psalm 22 11 he says be not far from me O god for trouble is near everyone who needs a colorful life must understand that without the help of god we are helpless on the earth thank god for academic qualification thank god for the pursuit of a job thank god for the desire of a better life but without the help of god every exercise helps ends up in futility help he said god is a very present help and in the name that's above every name i make this declaration precisely that everyone under the influence of my voice you shall be greatly helped by god the most urgent intervention of man is the help of god is the help of god nations with all their strategies fall prey into the enemy territory we see we live in a world i wonder why christians are no more prayerful because we live in a world where wickedness is on the increase in those days when nations are at war they get up they, 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 they get all their weapons and they release missiles you know from from the camp of one nation they release from the artilleries they open their bunkers and they release bombs and bullets no but now right in your room there are guided missiles that are sent from the it comes to the confine that is to tell you that satan is increasing in in demonic technology to see their lives are taken and you are still an outdated christians a christian that believe that with mere confession without warfare you can achieve a glorious destiny that is exercise in futility until you understand the god factor in matters of destiny until you understand the god factor someone was getting married in john chapter 2 from verse 1 the bible says both jesus and his disciples we are invited that man understood the god factor there are so many of us that we make our plans we make our desires we have all our plans lined out and we exclude god from our thinking the bible says there is a way that cement right unto a man proverbs 14 verse 12 proverbs 16 verse 25 proverbs 12 verse 15 he says the way of a fool is right in his own eyes there is a way that cement right unto a man as a matter of fact it is better you have little with more of god than have plenty with less of god are you following what i'm saying the bible says in proverbs 15 16 he said little with the fear of god is more than a, a good great treasure with trouble therein everyone that wants a glorious destiny must under understand the place of divinity the place where we read elisha speaks to a woman and said there is about to be a, a, a famine in the land and this famine will be there for seven years so number one the first trigger of divine help is divine direction the first trigger of divine help is divine direction if you want divine help you must understand divine direction the bible says in proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 and verse 6 trust in the lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path he shall direct your path he shall direct your path I prophesy he shall direct your path I prophesy he shall direct your path I prophesy he shall direct your path 
you must understand in our walk in life the solution is always older than the problem i don't care or know the battles you are in now but i want you to understand that god is ahead of the devil god is always ahead of the devil before sickness healing was god is ahead of the devil you see i'm in a mess i'm going through all kinds of trouble now the bible says in second corinthians 10 13 first corinthians 10 13 no temptation has seized you but that which is common to man and god in that temptation we provide a way of escape in that temptation in that tribulation in that pain in that catastrophe so whatever you are going through now i don't know how garaged and quarantined you are by that trouble but God said, in that trouble, there is a way of escape. There is a way of escape. I came to prophesy, escape is coming. You are coming out of that trouble. You are coming out of that battle. You are coming out of that hardship. You are coming out of limitation. You are coming out of shame. You are coming out of catastrophe. You are coming out of it now. You are coming out of trouble. You are coming out of pain. You are coming out of hardship. There is a way of escape. 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 There's 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 a way of escape. Take your seat. So Elisha spoke to the woman and said, Come, let me talk to you. There is about to be a seven year famine. So you have to leave this land and go to where you have preservation. There is about. So if that woman was not connected or she didn't get that message, she would have been a captive of that satanic assault. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, this translates to me this means that your current pain. Or your current travail is a product of insensitivity your current pain your current travail is because you were not sensitive to the spirit there were signals you got there were signals from God there were counsels from God either they came as a parable or they were not glaring enough so you didn't understand like the sons of Issachar the Bible said they were men who had understanding of the times and season and knew what Israel ought to do because the proof and evidence that you have understanding is action am I speaking to somebody now instruction without corresponding action is charismatic affliction when you have instruction and there are no corresponding action it is charismatic affliction so the proof you see we are, in a, we are in a generation of so much revelation but less manifestation because no action if you are looking for new messages they are in church revelation they are in church new preachers they are in church but there is minimum manifestation of power because we do not act on those revelation we do not act on those revelation he said the labor of the foolish where yet every one of them ecclesiastes 10 15 for he not let not how to go into the city so divine direction is the key from ex for exemption it was a key that exempted the woman the widow was exempted from the assault of the devil she was exempted by divine direction somebody say in the name of jesus i receive sensitivity oh lord when you are speaking help me to hear when you are instructing help me to follow when you are speaking help me to hear when you are instructing help me to follow when you are speaking help me to hear when you are instructing help me to follow when you are speaking help me to hear when you are instructed help me to follow divine direction is the platform for divine intervention divine direction is the platform for divine intervention there is no intervention without direction divine direction is triggered by trust 
if God must direct you you must trust him trust in the Lord trust trust understand that God has spoken. the Lord said you tell you if you stop now he will not miss you if you stop coming to church God says he won't miss you you need him am I oh, say, who are you to strive with your maker yes yes shall I go from thy presence Psalm 139 from verse 7 when I go to the mountain you are there I go to the valley you are there everything God tells you to do is for your good it is serving God is for your good am I speaking so no matter what you are going through now if you can key yourself into God's word everything turns out first Peter 5 verse 10 the God of all grace who has called you to eternal glory after you have suffered the why establish you is threatening you and settle you establish you is threatening you and settle you the God of all grace who has called you to eternal glory after you have suffered the why establish you is threatening you is settle you so child of God every act of service is for your good every instruction is for your good every revelation is for your good I know the thought that I take towards you the thoughts of peace and not of evil to give unto you an expected end Psalm 139 and verse 17 how great and precious and I thought towards me oh God great is the sum of them God has a plan for you it's for your good God has an agenda for your life is for your good tell somebody your left and right is for your good If you have ever sat down at some point on your, of your life on your work with God and it's, as, it's like you are tired of this work with God have you got to, don't add lies to the list of your sins how how many of you have got to that point in your life where you're like you know what what is even happening is, is God even is God even looking out for me it has happened I said don't add lies to the list of your sins they are already too much so don't add lies to it okay everyone <laughs> Everyone has come to that point. Has come to that point in life where you see things that you feel or you think you don't deserve. You know, sometimes this happens to you. Say, Lord, why me? Who else? Lord, why me? Who else? Who do you wish that for? They don't say, oh, God, why? They say, God, why me? So he should be somebody else, but not me. And this woman got an instruction. She got divine intervention because of divine direction. You will no more be blind. You will no more be blind. From now, receive direction. In the midst of that confusion, receive direction. This woman got a miracle. Don't forget. Let me tell you how the divine direction works. This woman got a miracle. A child was preserved. A child was preserved, brought back to life. Yes, she maintained the connection to the prophet. She could have detached after the miracles. You see, in this our work with God, love is the factor. Love should be your motivating factor. Love should be that motivating factor. Follow this God because you love him. Don't follow him because things are good or bad. If you follow God in all weather, he will keep you from bad weather. If you follow God in all weather, it will keep you from bad weather. Follow him in the morning. When you have no food on the table, love the Lord. When there's no money in your pocket, love the Lord. When it appears there's no baby coming, love the Lord. When it appears you don't have documentations, love the Lord. You don't have a good job, love the Lord. Yeah, oh Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy might, and all thy soul. Love the Lord. Why are we seen? We don't love him because things are good. We love him because he first loved us. First John 4 19. First John 4 19. Say we love him because he first loved us. Romans 5 verse 8. God commended his love towards us. In that while we are, we are yet sinners, Christ died. First John chapter 3 verse 1. He says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. John 13 verse 1 says, Having loved his own that is in the world, he loved them unto 
the end first Corinthians 2 verse 9 eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither did it come to the heart of man what God has prepared for them that love him Jeremiah 31 verse 3 he says I have loved thee with an everlasting love John 15 13 greater love has no man than this that for a man to lay down his life for his friend I love God I don't care what I go through I love God I don't care what the enemy does I love God I don't care what the enemy does to me Job said even though in my body worms destroy me I know my Redeemer liveth even in the flesh worm destroy me yet in my eyes shall I see God you don't serve a dead God you serve a mighty God he's the same yesterday he's the same today he's the same forever when God says yes no man can say no when God lifts you up no man can bring you down God is on your side power is on your side glory is on your side favor is on your side somebody shot fire somebody shot fire somebody shot fire somebody shot fire yeah, yeah, yeah. take your seat take your seat mm -hmm. proximity with the anointed can trigger divine direction proximity with the anointed can trigger divine direction sometimes when God Almighty connects you to people who carry his grace and his glory and you identify the finger of God the definite finger of God in their lives let there be proximity it can, it can preserve you it can help you are you for what I'm talking about? Yeah, I understand you as the apostle. You don't understand. There are fake pastors. Just the way there are fake doctors. <laughs> oh, there are fake prophets. Just the way there are fake nurses. There are fake bankers. There are fake lawyers. He's everywhere. Am I talking to somebody? But there is the original. The spirit bear witness with our spirit. The spirit will bear witness with your spirit. So there is proximity and you are very discerning. And he said to the woman, he said, you and your family. So, divine direction is also the key to family preservation. Listen. It is good enough to have a family or siblings that believe in God. It's okay. But have siblings that believe in you. Listen. They believe in God, but they believe in your vision. If not, you have people, you, you, you claim to serve the same God. But it's like mouse and cat. Yeah. There are people who everyone goes to church in that family, but they are loggerheads. Because everyone is fighting everyone. Everyone is fighting everyone. And that is where sensitivity comes in. Total sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Total sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. You have to be sold out. You can't be a part-time Christian and defeat a full-time devil. You can't be a part-time Christian and defeat a full-time devil. Satan is wicked. Even if you take D from devil, he's still evil. Satan has, he has, he, 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 he is corruption personified. Extermination personified. So do everything to make intercession for your family. Why do you think anytime God saves a man, it reflects on his household? Because God knows these are the closest things to that man that can pull him back to where he's coming from. He sent a word unto Jacob. Isaiah 9 verse 8. It lighted upon Israel. Abraham my servant. I know him. Genesis 18 19. He will command his household. Choose you this day. Joshua 24 15. Whom you will serve. But as for me yeah because they know that the proximity to the household can take them back to the place of captivity a man brought his wife for prayers and this man is a pastor and when they brought the woman for prayer she was skinny she was drying she was dying and i mean the man had prayed and the lord spoke to him in the revelation and said take your wife to apostle Suleiman." and the man came i was surprised because he's some great guy so when he came i was like what's wrong with him they kept it a secret nobody knew the woman was sick so i saw her she was a shadow of herself and when i saw her i was a little bit humbled i'm like ah 
what happened and she began to speak and the lord said tell her to keep quiet and the lord spoke what i heard shocked me i said ma sorry the lord said you are into witchcraft she said yes i'm a witch the husband was there I gave the prophecy i was shocked but i had to maintain composure i said that no i had the lord say she's a witch but you don't say that like that to a mama in the lord you don't just say that so you have to paraphrase so i said the lord so you are into witchcraft so she helped me and echoed it and said she's a witch now this is it and she wasn't too audible so you have to squat to hear what she's saying and the husband said me? i didn't hear that one. what yeah what yeah no matter how prophetic you are there is a level of contact and proximity with a personality that can shorten your prophetic sharpness your prophetic accuracy would fly away when your emotion has been bought into when somebody buys into your emotion that is why a man can be married to a woman from from the marine world and not be aware especially in a wonderful nation like the UK when their Christianity is as cold as their weather you discover we need the UK on fire we need Scotland on fire and end this man was shocked this was the problem she said to me that this thing on her originally is not supposed to be on her it's supposed to be on her husband people are donating in that realm they are donating and giving out it got to her turn they said she should bring her husband she said no and she said something that struck me she said sir my husband is a good man so they put it on her the man was a good man see rather than my husband getting this affliction i'll take it you know there are some men the women won't do that in fact before it gets to their turn so excuse me lucifer you are wasting time <laughs> when is it my turn this man is wicked <laughs> Psalm 86 verse 6 it says it's set solitary in families can you open your hand for one minute please everybody open your hand open your hand and stretch it to the altar now I make this declaration concerning your family and everyone that deserves this prayer in your family because of you your family is preserved your children preserved your spouse preserved your siblings preserved they are 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 preserved if your amen is louder take the blessing take your seat for a short while Yeah, yeah, yeah. Divine direction to be. Look at divine direction. It can be divine direction is definite. Seven years. Listen, as you walk with God, you must. You, see, you have to be extremely sensitive. A king's weapon is a spear, a sword. A shepherd's weapon is a sling and a stone. And as far as God was concerned, Goliath needed to go down through the instrumentality of a shepherd. That was why when Saul brought the king's weapon, David said, no, he took a sling and a stone. You can see that Saul could not preserve the father's asses. God used that as a test run for his assignment. So God said, okay, I'm going to give this man Israel but let me expose his father's asses to him and they were missing so God said this guy becomes king of Israel Israel will be missing off the map so God gave the, the sheep to David 
I said, let me see what you would do. When the lion came, he fought it and preserved the sheep. The bear came, he fought it. God said, this man will lay his life down for Israel. So you must understand, everything you are going through now is in preparation for your next level. Sometimes when something heavy is coming from the Lord, something heavy to teach you capacity god will allow you go through certain things to teach you capacity so that when this greatness comes you have largeness of heart to maintain it and still love the lord so when this greatness comes sometimes god will get to the end of yourself end of yourself end of yourself because of the level so when you attain that level all you will say is that this is god not by power not by might but by the spirit of the lord if you must enjoy divine help number two you must understand that waiting as an end waiting as an end seven years is after seven years i don't know how long you've been waiting for a testimony You've been waiting for a turnaround. You've been waiting for a miracle. You've been waiting for an encounter. You've been waiting for a visitation. You've been waiting for an upliftment. Your waiting ends today. It ends today. It ends today. It ends today. Do you know there are two birds? There are two birds that we are prophetically predicted before the time one of them was isaac before isaac was born there was a prediction and the other was samson before samson was born there was a prediction but there was another birth that was not as it were a prediction it was a connection because it ushered in the messiah and that was john the baptist am i talking to someone here the bible says when mary met elizabeth the babies in their womb moved because the seed they carried was of the holy ghost so anywhere the holy ghost is there is movement you can carry the spirit of god and be stagnant the seed was of the holy ghost so anywhere it is there is movement it's, it's moved when you are born of the spirit you are like the wind the wind blow it where it listed you can't tell when it comes or whether it's going so is every man that is born of the spirit i came to catapult you i came to cut shoot you i came to cut move cut fire and i decree by the power of god and by the force of the you are moving no one has permission to be stagnant or remain on the same spot your waiting time is not your wasting time i decree in the name of jesus you may have waited but you have not wasted i say you may have waited but you have not wasted i see your waiting coming to an end your waiting comes to an end your waiting comes to an end your wedding comes to an end. Your wedding comes to an end. If your amen is louder, you are the one I'm talking to. Take your seat. Wait. There is something I found out. I found out. And I was shocked when the Lord opened my eyes to see that. One day I was flying, I was going, going somewhere, I can't remember the place. And the Lord said to me, take your pen and your paper, bring it out. I brought it out in the plane. He said, do you know you all in your realm always talk about my time? My time. He said, I don't live in your, in your, in your zone. He said, I don't live in time zone. I said, but Lord, can I say something? Ecclesiastes 3.11 Because sometimes when the Lord is talking to me, I give scriptures back to ask him, okay, why is this? I say, he says he made everything beautiful in his own time. He said, okay. Scriptures, right? He said, John chapter 2. I actually told Mary that my hour has not yet come. And I did a miracle that same hour. I said, that's true. So Lord, what is this time? Because sometimes when we are expecting a miracle to happen, we are expecting something and we say, at God's time. And the Lord says, it's not actually my time, it's your time. Ah. I say, why? He said, listen, if it takes you seven or eight years to get a miracle, 
it was that seven or eight years you developed stature to handle that miracle and he said to me he said, Sarah was actually not a barren woman he said she needed time to have stature to be a mother of nation because if you see Sarah's character she was a terrible woman even in front of the angel she was laughing but the Bible never explained that attitude no if you think Sarah was barren I'll prove you wrong those you see the authors of, of scripture wrote scripture to our understanding when the king took Sarah into his house the Bible said God made the king impotent why was he impotent because any attempt Sarah will be pregnant you are not what I'm talking about so he took if you see Abraham even at 23 years of expectation Abraham was still asking God God has spoken to this man 22 years you shall have a son he was 23 years expecting still asking God shall Eliezer become my heir God said you two years more you don't have stature so if it takes you two years three years to get something it is that it took you that long to develop spiritual stature that that testimony and that miracle when it comes does not take you away from God so the earlier for example jesus said my hour is not yet come and mary turned and said whatsoever is said unto you do it as soon as they were ready he turned to them he said fill the water pot the, now one breath my hour is not yet come next minute fill the water pot miracle took place so because mary taught them how to build capacity he said listen if you want his hour now whatever he says to you do it until you get to that level where you can do what he says that means you have developed spiritual stature and when you have it it's not his time it's your time you don't get what i'm saying so it's taking you 10 years to get a miracle lord where will my time god said no you don't have capacity the fact you are still crying to god for a miracle means you have not grown uh, see what's he talking about yeah get to the point in your life where the miracle is not your pursuit get to that point you are saying lord you give it to me fine you don't give it to me i love you anyhow when you get to that level you have grown stature it's stature spiritual stature so people keep praying and hoping and expecting god is waiting for them to grow when they grow to that point that they are not being propelled by the troubles and challenges of their life that the factor the motivating factor is their love for god when they get to that you see abraham when the miracle came he had even forgotten he was just enjoying it jesus in his pre-incarnate form they appeared on the place of Mamre in john chapter 18 and they were walking in genesis 18 and as they were walking past abraham said oh please come in come in and as they walked in the lord reminded him of what he said and Abraham said yes and he said Sarah will get a miracle Sarah laughed and God put a date on it by this time next year because now you have grown stature you have grown maturity by this time next year so God is waiting for you to grow he's waiting for and the, the proof of your growth is that you are not desperate you are no more desperate you are no more overwhelmed as it were by the challenges around you that in the midst of all these battles there is joy inside of you rejoice in the lord always and again rejoice in the lord always and again that in the midst of pain get the devil mad let your joy let your joy mess up hell let your joy make the devil go crazy and cranky let your joy make the devil ask are you sure you sent that attack and the demon said yes we did i said but they're not looking like it they're not acting like it they're excited the joy of the lord overwhelms them count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation for the trying of your faith work at patience let patience have a perfect work in you that you may be entire wanting nothing we have all night prayers warfare all night all week fasting can we have all night of joy just excited everyone is just jumping and excited and thanking god for life and excited and thanking god and excited and thanking god and excited make the devil go mad 
all the soldiers took their weapons mm -hmm. they got to jericho ready to fire they lost a match round eh? match round and be silent on the seventh day shout sir soldiers are not trained to shout they are trained to shoot soldiers are not trained to shout they are trained to shoot it's a match round on the seventh day shout I, 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 I see, I, i'm happy that it's not our generation the Lord said, March round for six days on the seven day shout. It's okay. Seven days. It's okay. I'm going to please. When you put March, something's happening. Call me. <laughs> when you when you people go home and you are March, if something starts happening, I live close by. Just call me. So I will drive <laughs> marching for six days. Why? And nothing is happening. For those six days, every year was silent. Silence is not absence. God is silent doesn't mean God is absent. Sometimes God can be silent. God can, you pray. God is silent. You pray. <laughs> Sometimes you are asking, seeking the face of God for something and the Lord comes and you feel his presence. You are quiet and he starts telling you something else. You almost get upset. See, this is not what I'm asking for. The Lord tells you something else something totally different one day i was praying about my ministry i was asking the lord questions lord what are you saying what's the next thing to be done and we are talking and talking and talking i was asking the lord i was like i'm expecting something heavy his presence overwhelmed and they began to talk to me about my house some people in my house that must go i almost got upset but lord this is not what i'm asking you now you see some say this person this one has to leave that has to leave I said, Lord, I'm asking about this. And he was, he was silent. And about two hours later, he told me, he said, I am the Lord. I am the Lord. I understood what that means. I am God. By myself. I am God. So I speak when I want to speak. I am God. This is so. You can't, you can't propel me. I am God. So I said, Lord, I'm sorry. Uh, this matters of my house. What were you saying? <laughs> I stood up. I went to the fridge, ate something. This I've been asking. He said, it's God. So fasting has ended. <laughs> I understand. In other words, no matter what you do, I will speak when I want to. So I said, oh, Lord, what are you saying? About? I took a pen and it gave me the instruction. And I, when I slept, I woke up. He gave me the instruction about the ministry. You see the way it works? He gave me the instruction about the ministry. told me sometime. I'm like, why is it that when I want this? He said, no, because you, you don't have the key to opening the door. That's why nobody can preach on a message. The keys to success. No. You can say keys, not the keys. Because what's a key to you might not be a key to me. It's like marriage. There are no definite strategies on enjoying a good marriage. Because what works for you might not work for me. I wish I was talking to somebody here. You share your experiences. And people take, take, take notes from that. And God began to tell me. Only a cry. Can bet a new season. A cry. Can bet. A new season. Number three and then I'll pray for you. Thank you father. Thank you father. God is a master strategist. God knows how to network things. God is a master strategist. A woman came to return to her hometown, her territory, empty. Empty. Here was Elisha, a servant of Elisha, Gehazi, Telling the prophet, the king rather, all that God did through a man called Elisha. The king was excited, but he never witnessed it. Elisha did this. Elisha did. I said, wow. Seven years ago? Say yes. Before you ascended the throne, this man came. And he held the kingdom to ransom. Held us spellbound by the acts of God. The king said, tell me more. He said, there was even a woman that died. That the son died. This man brought the son back to life dead while he hit that point the woman walked in 
is a master strategist. In not the very day your helpers will need what you have and it will connect you to those helpers. He's a master strategist. You see, you must allow him to work things out. Just when he mentioned that, the woman walked in. Have you seen situations when you walk into places, they say, if you had come yesterday, just when he mentioned that, the woman walked in. He said, concerning Ezekiel, he said, bone began to join to his not bone to bone, but bone to his bone. The woman walked in. And when she walked in, he had said, this is the woman. This woman was asking for the restoration of her land so she can continue from where she stopped. But the king said, give her what she lost for seven years. That's one thing about restoration. When it comes, it comes complete. Give her all she lost for those. The king appointed a certain officer. Follow her. Angels will be deployed this morning. I say, angels will be deployed this morning. Angels will be deployed this morning. Until that which is yours is given to you, heaven will not rest. Until that which is yours is given to you, heaven will not rest. I see divine help bringing restoration. I see divine help bringing restoration. May you walk into the place where your helpers are mentioned in you. May you walk into the place where your good is being discussed. May you walk into the place where helpers are talking about you. May you walk into the place where helpers are talking about you. In the name of Jesus. May you walk into that place. May you walk into that place. The place where your helpers are discussing who should be favored, who should be blessed, who should be honored. May you walk into that place. When they are looking for vacancy, may you be the emergency. When they are looking for vacancy, may you be the emergency. May you walk in there. I decree your steps to be honored of God. From now, walk with, into places of honor. Walk with greatness into places of honor. Carry favor into places of authority. Carry favor into places of dignity. Your steps will be ordered from now. Your steps will be ordered from now. May heaven order your steps to your helpers. Are there places you will not be favored? May enjoy acceptance. Where others are rejected, enjoy acceptance. Where others are rejected, where others are rejected, where others are rejected, where others, it doesn't matter how it comes. Do you know the stigma following the uh, Gazi? To suggest to a king, do you know the stigma? One rejected by a prophet, one leprosy was laid, laid on. But the king said, Is this the woman? He said, Yes, by reason of that visible evidence, that mobile testimony, the king said, Appoint this officer and go with this woman, make sure everything. And I'm speaking to you for everyone under the sound of my voice. Everything you've lost in the last seven years is a prophetic declaration. Everything you've lost in the last couple of years, may the God of heaven restore double. 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 This morning, this morning is just an introduction.